Good afternoon. My name is Mark Goodman. I represent Score Chicago. You're watching live interactive call-in TV here on Hotline 21. Today our guest is Ariane Fisher of Story Mix Media. And uh, Ariane is the last of our seven semifinalists of our Elevator Pitch Plus contest. I'll go over to the overhead and do some documentation here. So this is September 12th, 2013, Story Mix Media. Our guest is Orion Fisher. Why do people come to SCORE? They come to SCORE because they want to start or buy a business, and we work with them on putting their business plan together and helping them finance it. We work with the SBA on obtaining financing. We work with people on sales, strategic issues, sales declining, business growing, and we do quite a bit of work with people on the internet. I'd encourage you to take a look at some of the workshops we have. You can check them out at our website at www.scorechicago.org. A couple more slides to show here. <clears throat> some events coming up. Uh, this is, uh, we're in the middle of our TV time for small business. We're on every Thursday at 5.30. Uh, we're doing a special presentation in Skokie, if you want to wander up there on October 3rd. And I encourage you to look at the Small Business Expo on October 4th. This whole program is being done with SCORE Chicago and the City Treasurer of Chicago. And the City, of Tr the City Treasurer of Chicago puts on the Small Business Expo at the UIC Forum on October 4th. If you want some information on there, you can go to www.chicagocitytreasurer.org. One more slide here. So these are our set of uh, semifinalists. Ariana is our last one. If you want to check out their elevator pitches, you can see it at www.snippitch.com. And if you want to see some of the interviews we've done, they're at our Blip TV channel at scorechicagocantv21.blip.tv. This is a call-in show, and if you have a question for myself on small business or Ariane on her business and business adventures, you can give us a call at 312-738-1060. Rhonda here is on the phone, and if you have a question and don't want to go on the air, you can just give Rhonda your question. She'll write it down and hand it over to us. And, you know, that being said, you know, Ariane, you're our last <laughs> of seven people. And, you know, we're going to give you the same opportunity we gave everybody else, since this is the Elevator Pitch Plus contest. Ariane, why don't you give our studio audience, since almost all of them could use your services, why don't you give them your Elevator Pitch? Sure, I would love to. I am the co-founder of Wedding Mix, or of Story Mix Media. And um, Wedding Mix is the simplest way to capture, share, and enjoy your wedding video. I'm sure everyone's been in the position where you go to a wedding and there's tons of guests there shooting photos and video on their cell phones or their cameras. And after the wedding, it becomes an issue for the bride because everyone puts those photos and video up on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram and there they live. After the wedding, maybe they go to celebrate their fifth anniversary and they can't find them. They can't download those videos and there's really nothing you can do with it. So Wedding Mix offers a way to crowdsource your wedding video. We have rented cameras that we send in a prepaid mailer and you just send back to us. And we also have a mobile app for iPhone and Android. And the guests can shoot fun photos and videos at the event and even from the proposal all the way through the honeymoon. And we'll edit together their wedding video. So they have something they can watch every year on their anniversary from the clips that the guests shot. And we've had amazing things like underwater proposals and camera caravans in Morocco, all included in wedding videos. It's really amazing. Okay. Uh, so essentially, if I want to use your services, I contact you and you send me a package with a bunch of cameras in it. Mm -hmm. And I take those cameras and I shoot a bunch of content and then I send those cameras with the content back to you yes okay you and don't after have to download you get anything yep and after you get those can't though that those cameras back what do you do with them yeah it's actually kind of fun we have an online storyboard so we take all the content off the cameras and we upload it onto our customer storyboard and then they get to direct the video they get to tell us what parts are most important to them what parts they don't want and then we actually edit the video for them. So they don't have to do any supercomputer stuff. 
we do all that. We do all the editing. But they just tell us what they want in their video. So how does somebody tell you what they want after they've sent the camera off to you? Well, we actually upload it, and then they go into our storyboard online, and they pick their scenes. They tell us, I want this scene. I want the bridal shower from here to here, and I want... Um, I want the entrances, I want this toast, but not that toast. And they'll tell us which parts of the scenes that they want, including the mobile clips, um, you know, that were uploaded from their friends' cell phones. And then we, we take what they suggested in their storyboard and we actually edit the video together. And then we'll upload it for their approval. So it's not like they're getting a surprise in the mail. Okay, so Ariane was telling me something interesting, one of the, the uh, well, let me ask you a question here before I go there. Is, so how long has Story Mix Media been in business? How long have you mm -hmm. been doing this for? We've been doing this since the spring of 2011. <clears throat> and uh, how many weddings have you processed? We've done, I think it's close to 1,000 now. We've done maybe six to 800. I don't know the exact number. Okay. I'm going to tell you something as mm -hmm. the microphone is here. And oh. every time you bang your... Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just a, a nickel for, for what that's worth. Um, <clears throat> so uh, you've been doing this since 2011, and you've done about 600 or 800 weddings. Mm -hmm. Now you also... I can also use this service for things other than weddings. Well, actually, Wedding Mix, we have set up with specific uh, editing styles specific for weddings, but we did just launch a service called Video Stitch, which is for any event. Okay. And that's actually a little bit different because with Wedding Mix, the bride uses the storyboard to tell us what she wants in the edited video. With Video Stitch, you crowdsource all the photos and videos from all your friends, and everybody can use everybody else's clips to create and photos to create their own video. So what you're saying is that here in the world of the wedding one, all this content is submitted to the bride mm -hmm. and the bride and I assume the groom. Yes. Look at it and say, you know, this is what we like. And they kind of build their own wedding video. Yes. Okay. Yes. And <clears throat> the difference with your other offering is that everybody puts the stuff up. Mm -hmm. And then different people can create different? Yeah. An example would be, um, like, my son is in hockey. And, you know, it happened that he scored the game-winning goal in his championship. Okay. And I missed the shot. And another mom got it. So she said she was going to email it to me. And I can't do anything with an emailed video. It's too small. Well, we can all upload all our photos and videos and all cut together our own edited videos at the end of the season. So we can all have our own little highlight reels of our own kids when we missed those key moments. All right, so let's kind of go back to the wedding question. So, you know, a typical wedding video that is uh, shot by a videographer costs between X and Y. So, mm -hmm. I mean, what would you say? Uh, between A videographer, between 1,000 and I've actually seen 30,000 yeah. for a wedding video. Mm -hmm. uh, the average, I would say, is around 3,000. Okay. Now, if I'm going to use your service, how much does it cost the range to use your services? Ours actually starts at $99. Okay. Um, if you add it on every conceivable option, you could probably spend 1,000 to 1,200. Our average is around uh, $350 to $500 is what most people wind up spending if they rent cameras and um, go that route. The app only starts at $99. Okay, I'm going to ask you one more question to kind of drilling down on what you're talking about. You talk about crowdsourcing content. Mm -hmm. Okay, why don't you tell people a little bit about what crowdsourcing content actually means. <laughs> sure. Crowdsourcing means... Everybody is capturing something that you want. It's all you're all at one event and everybody is taking photos and videos, but you really don't have any way to share it in one spot. I mean, you can share it where everybody can look at it, but it's hard to actually get to use the content from somebody else, the photos and videos. It's nice to look at, but when you really want to tell a story, you need access to the files. So crowdsourcing means that everybody can upload into one project and actually use it and create a video from it. Now you told me I can uh, use the cameras you sent me. If I had my own mm -hmm. iPhone, can I 
created the content out of my iPhone and then submitted mm -hmm. it as part of the crowd that is being sourced. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And we also have the option where people can upload. If somebody takes on their own fancy DSLR camera, they can upload from that using their computer. Or if they have their own cam camcorder, they can send in footage that way as well. So I think one of the things to highlight here is that Ariane and her company has basically developed this process with some more or less proprietary software. Mm -hmm that you know handles the submission and then creating the storyboards etc so yeah. it's more than just you know a common file where you bunch and throw a bunch of content into it exactly this is actually a custom edited video this isn't some for for your wedding video you don't really want an auto generated some computer picking scenes and boom here's your wedding video and it might the computer isn't going to know what you want in your wedding video. I mean, this is your wedding video that you want to watch every year on your anniversary and hopefully when you have kids, show it to them. So it's really important that it contain the right scenes. And so what we did is we created a proprietary way that people can actually select their scenes. But then in our offices here in Chicago, we have professional editors that do the editing, that correct the color, that correct the sound, um, that apply the music, apply the transitions, and then actually create the wedding video. Okay, so who are your key target customers for this service? Uh, I would say tech-savvy brides. Um, a lot of times they'll, and grooms, <laughs> they will understand, um, they will understand what it means to, to really want to harness all those photos and videos from their friends. They'll see it as an issue that they can't get the clips and photos. But at the same time, we've had budget brides, a lot of budget brides like that they can still get a wedding video and not spend $3,000. So if you have a question about harnessing your content, you can give us a call at 312-738-1060. So, <clears throat> Aran, how do you reach these tech-savvy customers? Well, a lot of it, we use social media. Uh, we have a blog and Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter. Um, a lot of the way that we reach our customers is actually through our current customers. Um, we encourage, we do a lot of trailer videos that we put on YouTube and we encourage our brides to tag themselves in Facebook and tell their friends. We have a lot of our current brides who are so happy that they wind up guest blogging for us on our blog and really encourage their friends to see it as well. Uh, we also do um, advertisements on various blogs and contests. Okay, so how do you pick which blog to advertise on? We try to find the blogs that have the most loyal brides, the ones where they leave a lot of comments or they really interact with the blogger quite a bit. And um, that's where we want to go. Currently, uh, we just finished a contest with Wedding Bee blog, and um, their brides are incredibly loyal. If a Wedding Bee suggests that somebody use a service, usually the brides look into it at least and so we this is called wedding wedding b wedding b yeah wedding b b e e mm -hmm. yep okay and their bloggers are called the bees okay. in fact we just had a wedding bee write about us last week and just an amazing personal blog where she was talking about how important it was for her to get a wedding video and how comforted she was to know she could get one at a price she could afford okay so i think this is interesting i've talked to other people when they've asked is about social media and what social media to use. And the instruction that I always give people is, you know, you should use the social media that you like and that your customers like. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because, I mean, essentially what you like is what your customers like and that kind of builds the momentum. Um, the other question I have is I, we hear quite a bit about, you know, pin interest. How do you use that as far as, uh, you know, gaining uh, awareness. We've run quite a successful campaign this spring on Pinterest using infographics, which are, well, everyone knows Pinterest is big for pictures. Infographics are a way to get information out there through drawings and uh, instructional graphics. And one of our most popular ones, it was called Wedding Hacks, and it provided 15 different ways you could hack together your wedding using affordable alternatives to traditional means. 
like a, an alternative to an expensive wedding gown might be to buy a used one and have spend quite a bit of money on alterations to really make it look custom. So your infographic was kind of a picture giving people information on different ways to essentially get a lower cost wedding. Yeah, and it was actually quite successful. There was one night where we had um, five orders in 15 minutes directly from Pinterest. And I would say, I would add another way that we use social media is actually YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, we have found about 40 to 60% of our brides are finding us through uh, organic search, which a lot of it is actually YouTube. We have about 300 videos on YouTube that are targeted specifically for search terms we know that they're looking for. So how do you target a video for a search term that a bride is looking for? Well, first, I personally use the keywords tool in uh, YouTube and look at what, what the most popular searches are related to what we do. And then I make sure those are in the title and in the description. In fact, YouTube has a fantastic uh, tool called, uh, I believe it's called the YouTube Playbook. And as a company, we went through it and started making the changes they suggested to drive traffic to our site. So something, if you want to use YouTube and put something up in the video, really pay attention to what's in your title. You know, it's not sometimes you'll see a business video up there and the title will be MOV23. Right. <laughs> because that was the default that came out of the camera. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, so, yeah, look at any of the social media tools, whether it be YouTube or Twitter or Facebook, they all want you to use them and to be successful. So look at their manuals and look at the services that they offer. Well, I'm going to skip down here for a little bit because uh, we always have to ask this question. So let's talk about your experience with your SCORE mentor. How did you work with your SCORE mentor in preparation for this show? Sure. Uh, Peg Corwin is our SCORE mentor, and she was amazing. Uh, we met together, and she went through the questions with me and talked about how to really tailor what we do for the audience on TV and how to speak about our company in a way um, that is appealing to the people watching the show specifically. Okay. So besides preparing for the show, what else did you and your SCORE mentor discuss? We've discussed a lot about marketing. Uh, as a small business owner, it is challenging to wear every single hat, to do the production, to, uh, I'm the chief operating officer, so doing production, doing social media, doing the marketing, running the business, payroll, all of it, and I can't know everything. So I do depend on Peg quite a bit for advice on things like marketing, and we've emailed almost every day where she's given us advice on different blogs to look at, different resources, and it, it's been amazingly helpful, especially as we move beyond weddings into video stitch, which we're specifically targeting towards small business and big business and knowing what they might be looking for as so well. So how has Peg helped you here helping to find your what, video? Video stitch. Video stitch. Mm -hmm. So how has Peg helped you in defining this next video stitch offering? Well, for me, one of, one of the things she sent me that really hit home was funny enough an infographic. And it was set up kind of like Candyland going through uh, the path to find your target customers. And it was amazing. It was all in one graphic. And this is a successful infographic of what steps you need to do to find your target customer. You know, define your target customer. Where do they hang out? How do you find them? Putting together a PR kit and every step that we need to do. And then now we're working on it together. So for your target customer on Video Stitch, where do they hang out? Well, for the small business owner, they hang out at SCORE. Okay. Hopefully. <laughs> and, and where else do they hang out besides SCORE? Uh, a lot of them do watch instructional videos on YouTube on how to market their businesses. So, And they hang out on marketing blogs and social media blogs. Um, usually small business owners are hungry to learn about how to run and how to market their businesses. Okay. So as part of this Elevator Pitch Plus contest, there's a grand prize of $5,000, and actually that's going to be awarded at the Small Business Expo. So if you want to see people 
getting their awards, you can come to the Small Business Expo at the UIC Forum on October 4th. However, the question goes to Ariane, if you're the winner and you get the $5,000, how are you going to use this $5,000 to help grow your business? Well, $5,000 can actually go a long way, especially we're in the fall wedding season. So we would definitely target it for advertising on blogs like Wedding Bee. Uh, another blog we advertise on is Offbeat Bride and really talking to our target customers. We've found when we invest in marketing on blogs, we can usually three to five times that in profit. So we would do that as well as more Pinterest campaigns. How much does it cost to advertise on a blog? Well, there's, funny enough, wedding blogs are the most expensive to advertise on. Uh, some of the blogs, it can be five to $10,000. And um, although you can find more affordable ones, there are advertisements like those little, um, there's banner ads across the top, and then there's the ads down the side. In our own research, we found that the little ads down the side, a lot of our target brides weren't actually clicking on them. So what we found though, was when we run a, what's called a sponsored post, where uh, the blogger actually receives payment for writing about you, and you, we do that in conjunction with a top banner ad or a side ad, we get much better response. So that's usually what we'll do. Well, I think it's interesting too how, you know, weddings are one of these things where your prospective buyer may not be a continual buyer, but for a short period of time is a very intensive buyer. Right, well actually, a lot of a lot of women when they're 28 may go to 10 to 16 weddings mm -hmm. or be in that many weddings as expensive as that sounds so our brides usually know a lot of other people getting married so although it's not recurrent income um, we've had uh, twins that used us one bride had a good experience so she referred her twin sister I mean we'll see the same last names or similar names quite a bit do you give any kind of incentives for referrals, or is it just the energy of your wonderfulness? <laughs> well, customer service is incredibly important to us. We really want brides to be incredibly happy. Even though we can't give them everything they want all the time, we want the experience to be amazing for them. So it's really important to us to you know, return, return phone calls right away, return emails right away. And um, we do offer incentives. Um, we do offer a trailer video which a lot of brides definitely want. It's an edited video that's maybe one to three minutes long that they can share on social media. So they're actually promoting our business. Um, they'll write about our business in an accompanying blog post. And, um, but they like getting this trailer video because they, can't, uh, they don't often have the opportunity to show a DVD to friends and family. Uh, and we do have an online gallery for their finished one, but this way they can show a little snippet of their wedding so when they refer friends, they can get a trailer video. Okay, well, we have time to ask you one more question here. And you can talk a little bit about your investors here if you want to. Where do you see this business two years from now? Sure. We are going to market beyond weddings. We have Video Stitch. And we are currently um, raising our next round, which is a, um, an early stage round. And um, we're about halfway through that round. Um, we are marketing video stitch to small businesses, um, to individual users as well, but uh, especially in the corporate market. So we're going to take what we learned from Wedding Mix. We learned quite a bit about how to market uh, video products and also our proprietary technology, which we expanded well beyond uh, one person creating an edited video. And we're going to work that into the corporate events market. So if you think about, there was recently a Ford uh, advertising campaign where they hosted a race and they invited all these racing fans to come watch the race and film on their own phones and their own cameras. Well, it cost Ford, I think it was between one and $300,000 to produce this crowdsourced video uh, because they had to have a bank of editors with the, their banks of computers. That's, the, that's where we're going with Video Stitch. We're giving them an opportunity to advertise using their clients' content. Okay, I'm going to uh, hit a couple of slides here, and we may have one quick question. Okay, just uh, if you do want to uh, talk to SCORE, you can see us on free, uh, get free counseling and mentoring. We have our online appointment system. Okay, uh, 
<clears throat> you can find us on Twitter at Score Chicago, YouTube, Score Chicago Video, our website, scorechicago.org. Give us a call at 312-353-7724. Ariane, one last question. Do you have a blog that they can read and get more information on your company? Absolutely. It's at storymixmedia.com slash weddings slash blog. Okay, so storymixmedia slash weddings slash blog. Okay, this is our last guest. Next week we have Bo Steiner from the SBA on talking about the SBA. We'll see you next week.